oh gosh, this is a ton of people. Admit all. Here we go. Oh, look at them coming up. We got uh, we got the uh, Marjorie Miller. Uh, we got yeah. Mike Chisholm. We've got uh, uh, what's her name? Uh, <laughs> And we got uh, Shecky. What's his name? No, what's his name is Brian, actually. Hello, Charlene. Hello, Edward. Paul! That's right. Love you, love you, dear. Love to see you. Uh, and let's see here. Brian Neary, ladies and gentlemen, better known as father of Adrian. <laughs> yes. She's at uh, dance camp. She's what? She's at dance camp. Oh, really? Yeah, I got to pick her up at at one thirty or two or something. Do so, they yeah. teach hoochie coo there? Yeah, <laughs> no comment. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know? Oh, and hello, little and Frisco. Hello, Alex. Do you know that Brian? I mean, Adrian was banned from TikTok. Yeah, what? and she's almost banned again. It says account warning account she's used she's used two of my emails the first one she used she got banned or as she says bandited and then uh the next one uh it says yeah oh she is what account. six years old now right six yeah what did she do? brian what did she do uh too much as alex would say hoochie coochie <laughs> <laughs> yes. her dance was not appropriate for a six-year-old is that about <laughs> Putting it right, she's wearing half her crop tops, and yeah, yeah, it's not. <laughs> you know, she just, she just, you know, she just copies what she sees on TikTok, and she doesn't know, you know, sticking out your butt probably isn't the best thing to do on social media. Well, you could stick out your butt if you were like all those other women that she's imitating, you know, the dancing, right? Are women who are, uh, you know, old enough. Right, but she she is of of a certain age. They don't want to have anything to do with that because some people might say, "Oh, pederasts will be very interested in that." Yeah, but it's a good thing. But it's just funny. Yeah. It's just funny that she got banned from yeah. TikTok. She will be here, and she's dancing in front of her mom. And then the door is half open, and she moves back so her mom can't see. And then she goes and she starts the hoochie coochie again. I'm like, oh my god! Where did she learn that dance from? TikTok she's on Mandy's Facebook page all the time. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it reminds me of the scene in Mean Girls when they walk, they go into the girl's house, and the little girl's standing in front of the TV, you know, dancing <laughs> all the boys to the yard. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Well, how are we all doing, everyone? Good. I got to get something out of the way first. Marjorie yeah. feels that I should wear a hat. Just my opinion. Now, here we go. Here's here's me without the hat. Okay? And here's me with the hat. You well, wore the hat. hat. Put a dark color on. You oh, now you're telling me what color hat to wear. <laughs> better in the dark colors i look well i'm, I'm used to seeing you in the hat you've been wearing Bennett, it for this Bennett, show do, you have a, do you have a yankees hat what do you have a yankees hat no oh all right no, <laughs> no i i don't have one of those i do have a darker hat i can go get a darker hat to keep marjorie happy i have a yankees to keep the wife happy Oh, I just think a Yankees hat would look pretty cool. Come on, Len. Len, Len you got to say your line. Come on. I got to say my line? Yeah, what's your line? Hey, at least he's wearing pants. Oh, <laughs> Come on, Len. You're losing it. Okay, here we go. How's that? Uh, there. Uh, forgot, forgot better. That one. better than bold. Better than uh, what? Bold. Really? No, I don't know. I find that when you finally cut my hair and it's kind of really um, on all sides, I kind of think I look good this way. I don't. Well, let's all take a vote. How many? Hat on, hat off. First, hat on. Would you raise your hand, please? Okay, the one, two, three. I like that. Hat four, off. Four, four. Four. Okay, hat off. Five. One. No, now we're doing hat off, dear. You can't count the hat offs with the hat ons and call it the hat ons. 
<laughs> hat on, raise your hand if you think I look better with the hat uh, off. I I have a, a suggestion. I think with the, the hat off, you should have an earring. <laughs> I used vest. to have one. A black leather vest, and that's yeah. all. The yeah. earring, right. black leather vest, perfect. <laughs> you're, like a, you're like a Sons of Anarchy member. It's great. Bro, oh, Jesus. Okay, is this all right? Better. But better. Mandy likes me better with the hat off. <laughs> You know, but you're married to Marjorie, so you know why. Why, why is that? Wait, why is that, Mandy? I voted twice. I voted <laughs> just because <laughs> <laughs> I voted neither one. So Rick and I voted neither one. So oh well. Anyway, it's so yeah. I don't care. <laughs> no, same here. I don't care. Just make sure you're alive to have the show. That's all I care about. Right. Yes. I'm going to my doctor tomorrow, so I might not have good news. You never know. Oh, here we go. Uh, I noticed in my thing on my heart, my radio cardiology thing, there was something he said was bad or it wasn't bad. It was slow or whatever, but otherwise my heart looked okay. So, you know, Good. But, I have you, know to look with. you can get a stroke just like that. You know, I wish I could hey, get a stroke just like that. Paul Servino, you know, huh? he dropped dead yes, today. Yes, he died. Oops. Yeah, I know. Paul what? Yeah. All these moms died from what? What was it that he died from? They didn't say. I mean, I didn't see. Well, he was eighty-three, was. so that that you know, he's in that. Who know, was this? Huh? Paul Servino. Paul Servino. Uh, the okay. actor. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he's gone. And and uh, then um, what's his name? The director died over the weekend. Um, yeah, what's his name? Um, I'm going up on the name. What did he do? Rafelson. Rafe. Oh, uh, oh, he, oh. He's well. He's more a producer than. No, he was a director, but he was also like 98. Rafelson. Bob Rafelson. Really, he was that old. That's what I read. 98. Who else went at a late age the last couple of weeks? Somebody really went. Oh, you know something? You know, on Wednesday, Norman Lear turns 100. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. As Kevin Smith would say, that's a big bucket of wind right there. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. If I live to be a hundred, boy, am I going to be cranky? <laughs> <laughs> you know. I think Norman Lear would say the same. Really? Hold on a second. I want to adjust my uh, my, uh, my. Well, picture. Mel Brooks. What is Mel Brooks now? Ninety-seven, ninety-six, or something, something like that. Yeah, something like that. It's weird to see Mel move on without Carl. It's really weird to me. Really? It yeah. is. It's it's trippy to me because I. It, after they hit a certain age, mm -hmm. I just picture Mel Brooks and Carl Reiner together. Well, they, they ate dinner every night together, apparently. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's On weird. TV trays. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, had, 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 had Carl lost his wife? Yeah. So that's the reason they probably, you know. But she lost, he lost her at least 10 years ago. Well, Carl yeah. Reiner? Yeah. Yeah, you okay. Know. So that's the reason they had dinner every night. You know, the why. You know, and then they would bet on anymore. how Dave would come in on our show, you know, <laughs> at the top of the show, running across, you know, which way is he going to walk? That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Imagine the conversations that were had over dinner, and that yeah. must have been unbelievable. <laughs> well, or it could have been, it could have been something you least expect, like, this fish mm -hmm. isn't that good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Pass the butter. Yeah. Pass the butter. <laughs> yeah. Or maybe yeah. snoring. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think I think they talked about that. How sometimes one of them would fall asleep and the other one have to wake the other one up. There's a really good episode of uh, uh, of comedians and cars getting coffee where they're actually documented. It's it's highly recommended, worth watching. If any of this interests any of the viewers out there. Who? But which one? Which one? Well, it's an episode of Comedians in the Cars Getting Coffee with right. one of them on there. I forget which one it is, but then the show basically morphs into 
Jerry joining them for dinner. Oh, really? Yeah, really? really I good. didn't. Did you ever see that one, Marjorie? I think I, I don't didn't remember. <clears throat> I'll have to. It was a good one. Go look. I would. Have, I would have liked to see the pinochle games. Uh, oh, really? They had regular oh, pinochle games. Okay. That must have been amazing. They played pinochle. Well, how do you play pinochle? That's a lost art, I think. <laughs> It's like Parcheesi. Explain that one to me. Paula, your, your microphone's off, Paula. Yeah, I, I was taught once, but I, I don't remember much. I think it's kind of a combination of bridge. There's, there's some elements of bridge in it and some elements of poker. But it was oh, when we used to play Canasta. I oh, love Canasta. Oh, God. Yeah. This is great. <laughs> That's a great game. This, to me, Pinocchio, what, what's it called? Pinocchio. <laughs> Pinocchio. <laughs> Pinochle always sounds like an ice cream to me, ice cream flavor. Uh, maybe you'll do, maybe you'll do better. With, Pinochle. What? Maybe you'll do better with your hat off. <laughs> no, oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, Pinochle is the 29th flavor at Howard Johnson's. Right, exactly. <laughs> Which, what's it, you know, the day I felt really depressed. We were there for the last night that Howard Johnson's in Times Square was open. When was and that? We were there and we stayed till closing. And I have the a... automat? Huh? The no, automat? No, no. Or the, or the sit down restaurant? The sit down restaurant. The last was... the last one in Times Square. The last one in New York City. I think the last one. Well, that, in... was, a, that was on like 45th Street, if I remember correctly. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, how long ago was that? Every Friday night, we would get together and have what we call movie night. And we'd go there eat whatever, and then go to a movie in Times Square. Uh, and they would sit in the front row. I couldn't do that. They would all, the part, one of the rules was you had to sit in the front row, and I just couldn't do it. I watched Bugsy that way, the first time I ever saw Bugsy. And I never knew what the movie was about, because all I saw are these big giant faces going back and forth. First row is not watching a movie. You know, you agree, right, Mandy? Yeah. Where do you sit, Mandy? Oh, I like to sit in the very, very back, like up on the, you know. Oh, you have it. oh will you marry me, please? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's my favorite. My favorite place is like the very back row. Because yeah, you don't have anybody behind you to kick your seat. The, no, yeah. You're right about that. And, and also, you get the whole screen. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. You're not, you, you know, you're seeing everything. You're not. Yeah. Now, what 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 row do you like to sit in, Rick? I guess the back, huh? Oh, I sit in the back. Okay. So in you and I would have no trouble. She row. wants fourth row. Fourth row. Fourth row. On the on the end. Yeah. Yeah. Who? That's that's cool. you. No, in grade school it was the first row. No, fourth row. I said you like the fourth <laughs> row. I don't sit in the fourth row. You say to me all the time, "Here we're getting we're getting seats for the fourth row." You always get the fourth row. I don't always get the fourth row. What do you get? The tenth row? It depends on what show. What do you mean? Are you talking about Broadway or are you talking about movie theaters? We're talking about Broadway. I'm talking about movie theaters. Movie theaters. It's wherever you can sit. No, you take the fourth row. You always have to have the fourth row. First and second seat on the end. No, I like the first row in, in the lower balcony. There are no balconies in most theaters anymore. Well, the I'm telling you the one we... Do, I, do, you, do you not remember? Go, well, I guess we don't remember going to movies. That was years ago. Well, look, look at Mandy. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's like your, your, your parents your arguing. Where do you like to sit, the, Mike? Uh, well, it depends on the phase of my life you're talking about there, uh, Alex. Uh, you know, high school, it was very much the back row in the corner because mm -hmm. of, uh, you know, the female companionship and the, and the, the, oh. the hopeful uh, hijinks that came with that. Yeah. Now, now it's probably, uh, if, if, the, if the theater is empty, mm -hmm. center, center is obviously the best spot. But if the theater is not empty, we usually go in the, uh, the middle row, except... Uh, on one of the ends because that way 
if there's like four there, we can spread out and we'll take the entire row for ourselves, that kind of a thing. So well, you see, I like the end because yeah. I if I have to get up and go to the bathroom, which I don't have to do as much as I used to, yes. uh, get up and go to the bathroom. I, I'm not going, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, yeah. excuse me. So the end is where it's at. There's no yeah. question. Yeah, no question about that. And and Shecky, I, did I just ask you? No. Yeah, I sit yeah. in the back. Back. Okay. Uh, uh, Charlene, where do you mm -hmm. sit? The back. Back. Uh, Edward Berger, where do you sit? We usually sit in the third row. Third <laughs> row. Yeah. You know, these are the theaters with the recliners and things like that. Yeah. You know, so yeah. they had a lot of them. I get the ones with the recliners, and then I never recline. <laughs> <laughs> You know, because I find that uh, I, with neuropathy, it puts my feet to sleep. Uh oh. <laughs> Paula, where do you like to sit? Yeah, I like to sit in the back, but the recline those recliner theaters are, are, are they're awful for me because the, the recliners are always way too big for me. And I feel like I'm disappearing. <laughs> it's not, not, my, not my kind of experience. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, most theaters have recliners now, right? Yeah, I mean, it, it, back it, rows. What, the, the, uh, the the real big recliners are in the back rows. Oh, really? And the regular seats are in the front row. Well, you you may not have that in the. Uh, oh in no, the we have we. What happened was we used to go to this movie theater down on Broadway, okay, and then it closed down for about four months, and it was the worst theater in town. I mean, it had the worst. It had. It, it had the worst popcorn. It, how do you make bad popcorn? It had the worst everything. The people working there didn't look like they were enslaved. I mean, it was horrible. So all of a sudden, I see the movie theaters open back up, and they got something we want to go see, some Marvel film in 3D or whatever. And I said, Marjorie, well, let's go. And we walk in, and the whole theater is nothing but these recliner seats now. And I said, what the hell happened here? <laughs> and we sat down in those seats and we said, finally, the movie theaters have gotten a good idea, you know, and they were only charging about a buck more per seat in that theater. So that's what but I then you fall, don't you any fall good. asleep when you're in those chairs. Exactly. Uh, exactly. Marjorie does. I don't. She falls asleep in any movie. I don't care. She could be a movie she wanted to see desperately. Yes, Mandy. I was just agreeing. That's me. Oh, I, that was your way of agreeing. Yes. What, they make you drowsy? Yeah, there's something about movies now. I just can't. Well, you know, since I've, 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 I've started taking this, uh, this pill for my neuropathy, uh, I always fall asleep, it seems. Doze off at about five in the afternoon. And then I, I'm okay, all right? Uh, I don't know what's going to happen in a movie theater now because I haven't been to a movie theater since I started taking all the like, Dewey dealing yeah. with all since that. COVID, since COVID started. Yeah, yeah. Because you know what I have now? I have positional vertigo. Oh, here we go. <laughs> what do you mean here we go? Every day I hear about your back, about your uh, your 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 allergies. I hear about the this, the that, you know. And, and, you know, I've got a couple of things. Let me complain about them. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Bennett and Marjorie are married. Weeknights this fall on CBS. Yeah. Eight o'clock. Be there. <laughs> anyway, don't you, don't you understand what the... <laughs> so anyway, I've heard positional neuro, uh, vertigo. <clears throat> and that's why I've been dizzy all the time. You know, I complain about how I'm feeling lightheaded and things like that. That's what it is. So mm -hmm. there are these exercises you can do because what happens is you get a little, there's like a little thing, a crystal in your ear that mm -hmm. gets loose. You know what I'm talking about, Jeff? You got a screw loose? <laughs> you, you're doing yeah. that for peripheral neuropathy? Uh, for peripheral I don't know. Positional you're supposed to put it on your head, I think. Oh, do I, this, I wouldn't right? wish vertigo on my worst enemy. Vertigo sucks. I hate that. It's it's an awful. awful well, I'm I'm lightheaded all the time. Yeah. And and so uh, there are these exercises you can do. 
yeah that take this little crystal that's gotten dislodged and is in your ear and it kind of <laughs> you off. alex didn't you spend a lot of money when you were younger to get that feeling <laughs> <laughs> You know, you got a point there. I didn't stop to think about it. <laughs> the wages of sin. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, so there are these these uh, these uh, these uh, uh, exercises you can do where you have to lie one way at forty five degree and then another. Oops, I'm getting dizzy now. And then you sit up, and boy, you're really reeling when you sit up. And and uh, it, I've been doing them, and I'm, I'm, I'll see if it works. You know. Can you some work? I'll just like in Spanish when you're talking? What? When you start doing that, do you start talking in Spanish or something? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> if you got your head to the right. But you know what I got to have Marjorie do is when I'm doing them, she got to look. Supposedly, her eyes do something. They start quivering. Yeah, well, I'm here to say that I knew Marjorie when she was a teenager, and she was always dizzy, so I, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> You knew her as a teenager, huh? Wow. Even before then. Before what was she then. like as a teenager? Oh, she was wonderful. <laughs> what <did you> say? <laughs> no, no. She, she was wasn't bad. a she wasn't a brat. Nah. Nah. Really? You mean she was okay? Yes, she was. Well, you paused. <laughs> you paused. <laughs> you paused, Paula. <laughs> The only person that knows me here when I was younger, well, younger than I am now, is Shecky. How long were we known each other, Shecky? We met in 78. How was your birthday present? Yes. <laughs> explain oh, that's it. a true story. No, explain it. Explain it. Our good friend Steve Weiner's wife arranged, because Steve was a loved listening to Alex's radio show oh. and she arranged for Alex to be quote the guest at his birthday party and and oh. that's where we met yeah yeah and then and we that, did that weird tv show if you remember on yeah. cable channel c or j or mm -hmm. whatever what, what year did you come to San Francisco and start doing the uh, live studio audiences? Oh, well, that, 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 you know, I was born in San Francisco. Right. Yeah. yeah I was yeah. raised in San Francisco, but I never had a job in San Francisco until. I thought it was eight, 1980, maybe 81. 1979, I think I went. Late mm -hmm. in 1979, like November. So, so I've known you then. I mean, I've known of you certainly since then. Used to come sit in the audience every once in a while. So, yeah. Not that we're friends or anything, but I mean, yeah, yeah. that's pretty cool. Huh. Yeah, yeah. But check hey, speaking, I... speaking of people who are are or might not be our friends, uh, Steve Bender just messaged me. Hey, I was five minutes late, been sitting here for 15. He's not letting me in. Can't stay what? long. Oh, well, say hello. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I say didn't, hi to everybody. I didn't so. see Steve write back to him and tell him to try. He said, try again. Well, mm -hmm. he's got a tutor now. So he just uh, told me to tell everybody hi. And oh, uh, I didn't see he didn't come up on my list here. Otherwise, I would have done it. Great yeah. job, Alex. Thanks a lot. <laughs> great hosting work. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> see, now Steve's going to be mad at you. See how <laughs> now, now, see, I knew you back at Live 105, and you did that to me a few times. Did I do that to you a few times? Yeah. I told you I was always like first in line for all the breakfast with Bennett's. Probably like five or six of those. I was first in line. And then we'd say something smart ass to you and you'd flip us off as you're going in. Mm. <laughs> yeah, well, that, that was my nature. That's I why I, I wish I could see some of the pictures. I know you had like photography done at those at those shows, like with Bob Geldof and those. I was there front row, right dead center. On the I don't audience. know who was taking uh -huh. those photographs or, or who has them now. Every now and then. Somebody will send me a picture of myself doing something that I never saw before. Yeah. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. Like like those pictures they sent to me where they were trying to get money for them because uh, I was having sex with somebody. But anyway. <laughs> uh, what, is, what is it about being a brat, a little bit bratty, when we uh, uh, are, are hooked up with a host that we like or a show that we like? Is it akin to like being a heckler to a comedian? Is it what, do you mean a, what do you mean a brat? 
What do you mean a brat? Well, like Brian was just saying, he'd say something smart ass. I know when I had my little thing with Dave, I was totally a brat. I was totally smart ass. Like, and and it's it's is it is it, are we trying to give them fodder? So we're we're actually think that we're assisting. I think the host I think you're probably trying to show that you're as yeah. funny. It, you're not yeah. really as funny as they are because obviously you're a fan, right? Um, we're trying, trying to, to show that we can hang with them. Is that what it is? Yeah. That you that you're <clears throat> like them. You know. Uh, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, but then when he does that back to you, you feel like your family, you know? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Without yeah. a doubt. Paula, yep. Paula, do you remember in high school we tried to get on bandstand and we were turned away? <laughs> <laughs> no, Marjorie. What I remember is that I got on bandstand. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, pro the problem with that is that if I tell people, you know, under a certain age now, it goes, no, it goes nowhere. They don't know what the they hell. They don't even know what they're talking about. Who is Dick Clark? Dick, I'm 40, I'm 46. How, how, how many times did you do uh, bandstand? Once or minute? Yeah, this yeah, one? Yeah, yeah I, I, um, I, 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 uh, I think I left school early uh -huh. that day um, and, got, and got on, on the elevated train and got off at uh, 56 and Market Street and went to WCAU and uh, with my friend and there was there was a uh, there was Dick Clark who had a very large head actually. Now how did they so, figure out who you were going to dance with? No, no, I, I I went with a partner. I went with a. Uh, with oh, you a, went with a partner. Okay. Uh, oh, 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 now, yeah. Absolutely. Now did they did they obviously they had a a studio warm up right? No, they didn't. They didn't. Do, they didn't give you any rules to go. No, with? no, they didn't. Because like no, they, giving them camera the finger and things like that. No, they, they act, if they did, I wasn't aware of it. But Man, I was, if I had a bunch I, of kids coming in to dance, I'd have a whole bunch of rules in those days, like no humping and no none of this and none of that. No, I think I, yeah, they, they <laughs> no were doing ready. the dirty bop. But no, were... no, Adrian's hoochie coochie. Speaking <laughs> of Adrian hoochie coochie, I gotta go pick her up. Mm. Hi, everybody. Oh. Hi, wish her our best, okay? Hi, Brian. Yeah, of course, of course. Well, I think Please. those restrictions were only Philadelphia. In New York, <laughs> you could do anything. You but this, really? this oh, was from Philadelphia. This was no, I just, I just wondered if they had some kind of a studio warm up, you know, where they told you, "Hey, kids." Well, no, but the, the regulars knew what to do. I, the thing that I that I remember most was that you could, you really couldn't get on camera because the regulars had very sharp elbows. Mary. <laughs> really? Oh. Yeah. 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 Oh, oh, we got to sit next to Dick Clark when he was yeah. introduced. He would show the album cover and he was sitting there ready to introduce the guest, the singer. <laughs> and there would always be people right next to him, you know? Absolutely. And they would, you know, have all that FaceTime. And I was like, that's what I want to do. I want to just be sitting next to Dick Clark while he yeah. introduced <laughs> him. I watched 46. it in the I love Bandstand. Did you... um? You and your partner that went there, did you two practice moves before you went to bandstand? So you know, well, no, doing? no, no, honey, we already had the moves, right, Mark? Television all the time, right? I'm gonna have that theme song in my head all afternoon now. It's great, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I, uh, you know, I mean, I, um, I remember going to a dance show in San Francisco with a girl that I knew. And I said, and she, and she was crazy about Elvis Presley, just nuts about Elvis Presley. And uh, I said to her, you know, when we get there, I don't want you holding up any banners, anything that says Elvis. OK, don't embarrass me. All right. So we, I pick her up and she's wearing this, you know, dance, you know, what do they call those dresses that were like? kind of hoop skirts i don't know what they call them you know what i'm talking about i it's never a poodle wore. skirt poodle, poodle, poodle skirt, poodle skirt. Poodle. that was it okay yeah. and, and and you know black poodle skirt nice so uh we go to this dance show and just before it starts she says i gotta go to the bathroom i said okay well mm. hurry up because the show's about to start and she goes to the bathroom she comes back she turned the poodle skirt inside out and it said elvis across oh, the road. Oh, yeah not cool man not cool not, not cool not cool i remember her name her name was michelle yeah thank mm -hmm. you michelle if you're out there if you're still alive <laughs> <laughs> 
most of them aren't, you know, so, whatever. So, um, anybody? I, I, I have a funny comment, but I don't know how, how it it's, has an ethnic origin. Yeah. But I'll share it anyway, because it's about Elvis. Um, my son in law's mother, who's a character all by herself, but sent him an email that said, uh, uh, that 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 El uh, approving that Elvis was actually Jewish. Al Elvis was actually Jewish. All right, now I'll pause there, Sue, so that you can respond to this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. It's, it, it seems that that um, the proof came from the Detroit Jewish News mm -hmm. that showed that his mother Gladys's tombstone had a Jewish star on it. Mm. And that apparently there was somebody in his family tree. That was... <laughs> but I must say that I was very tickled by that because I, um, I know that Elvis, I think he was born in Tupelo, Mississippi. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I thought that the, 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 I thought that was pretty strange, but. Um... Okay, hold on, hold on. Would that not make Elvis the king of the Jews then? <laughs> that help us. <laughs> Information: Paula was the head of the Elvis Presley fan club in Philadelphia. Really? Yeah. I told you never to talk about that, Watchman. <laughs> <laughs> Elvis was kind of like uh, uh, when I was growing up. To me, Elvis was like a lot of things in life that you like when you're a kid but then you grow up and you go why why did i like that mm. you know mm -hmm. yeah but doesn't it circle back though it what circles back. why did i like that and then it becomes an appreciation again like i think it circles back right uh, i've can... never really been a fan of elvis presley my mom is the same age as you Alex. <laughs> She always told me, like she was a teenager in the 50s, and she's like, I had never understood why anybody liked him. And apparently when he must have played in Atlanta, I guess, her friend somehow got a hold or claimed she got a hold of his toothbrush. <laughs> so, this may have been when he was still kind of starting out. But she just said, I didn't understand why anybody liked him I, she didn't like him at all you know she wasn't a fan and she was you know right there in the teenager in the 50s when he was well you know. I was always I was always a big fan of uh of uh, uh little Richard Fats Domino uh Jerry Lee Lewis mm -hmm. uh, yeah every, you know and and especially especially Chuck Berry yeah and Me I too. just never got into Elvis I just thought he was just like He's just saying too many ballads, you know. But he came from those roots. Yeah. He came from those roots, but there were better people in those roots. I mean, uh, uh, Jerry Lee Lewis came out of that same group that was at Sun Records at that time. In fact, probably played piano on some of Elvis's records and Sun. Mm -hmm. and Sun. Uh, and, um, Jones, I know that. Huh? But, she liked know, herself some Tom Jones. <laughs> Jones you know records. something? Tom Jones is better than anybody gave him credit for. Oh, I know. Oh, yeah. that guy's a hell of an entertainer. That guy is. No, like, but forget about entertainer. He, the charisma. He, he can really sing. Sing. You know? That's right. He I think really you're right. Do, do those songs. He, he can yeah. walk the walk. But anyway, uh, 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 Shecky and I have something very special we shared together. Ooh. When it comes oh, to oh, all of the Sun Records. Well, we went to Sun Records, which is, if you're ever in that, in, where is it, Memphis? Memphis, yeah. Memphis. Um, go to Sun, take the Sun Records tour. It's it's phenomenal. It, uh, you really thought it was good, right, Rick? Oh, I thought it was great. And then not much went, of a tour because it's a small building, you know. Then we went over to, to Grace. To Danny Thomas's mausoleum. Oh, we went to, we went to St. Jude's, didn't we? And yeah. to see J Danny Thomas's mausoleum See the glass and, and glass table. coffee table. Of course. <laughs> you do know what I'm referring to, don't you folks? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's the old, well, it's the old Jerry Lewis. Would you care to tell him, Shecky? It's the old Jerry, uh, uh, Jerry Lewis. Um, um, uh, what do you call it? Um, Danny, Danny, Danny Thomas. Thomas uh, legend. And, and maybe you'd like to tell them the legend. Just to clean it up a little, he <laughs> apparently liked to have women while he was sitting under the glass table. Right. 
Really? Yeah. Take a loosen themselves on the top of the table. Oh, supposedly, and I have supposedly. no idea. Supposedly, but all I know is I have a friend um, who uh, went to work for Danny Thomas, and she was asked to go to Danny Thomas's office, and he wasn't there, so he she sat down on the couch, and right in front of her was a glass coffee table. <laughs> You know, but that was the rumor about him. So mm -hmm. we were kept we kept saying to people, "Where's the glass coffee table?" <laughs> <laughs> you know, do you remember they had the dining room and the um, what was the thing that was carved into the wall? The Last Supper. The Last Supper at the in the dining room. In the dining room. Yeah, there's a wood uh, carving. And but this is not to be smirched. Uh, uh, St. Jude's, which is one of the charities I would give money to. Oh, yeah, because from what I gather, 100% of your money goes to help people. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not like the Red Cross where, oh, I got my private jet and, you know, 20% well, yeah, of the money goes to, uh, like, BS. I always, before I ever did a benefit, I always asked how much the particular organization had in um uh what do you call it? uh well, what do they the well, how money do they whatever the charity out is yeah and it was pretty good it's pretty good yeah and uh, saint jude's had a good reputation that way muscular dystrophy oddly enough had a had a at mm. least at the time something like only 90 percent only and only 10 percent went to uh administration the rest of it went to the mm. actual doing it. Well, that's why I like, and none of you would know the Bowery Mission here in New York, mm -hmm. because 100% of the money goes to take care of indigents. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. That's where I'll get my money if I ever have any money to give. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes, uh, uh, Jeff had his hand up. Yeah, do these uh, organizations who theoretically are giving away all their money to somehow some magic place where they keep the bank. Mm -hmm. Do they have to be nonprofit? Yeah, because they're tax exempt. I think so. Yeah, to be tax exempt, they have to be nonprofit. And then they get to have a private jet for the guy who runs or woman who yeah. runs. Well, the place. making it nonprofit doesn't mean that you can't pay your people. Just file things oh, yeah. You know, you can pay the president that. of your company a million dollars a year and yeah. you're still a nonprofit organization. Like, did you see the story to the paper today about some preacher who got mugged while he was preaching yesterday on his pulpit? Mm -hmm. $400,000. Oh, jewelry. no, no. I just read it. A bishop. Oh. Yeah. He and his wife were robbed. Of on the ready for this one million dollars worth of jewelry they had oh on them. God. Now, yeah. where did he get all that money so she could have a million dollars worth of jewelry? From the everybody who's getting their salaries. I guess that uh vow of poverty thing is out the window, huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he by the way, he's a he's a very good friend of our current mayor. Oh, really? <laughs> Now, when they say bishop, is he a bishop in like the Catholic Church or is he a He's bishop? He's a bishop in... like you and I are a bishop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A son of a bishop. Well, I, I happened to be, uh, I was uh, a priest in the uh, in uh, preacher, One of those phony in, things. In the uh, Universal bucks. Life Church of Modesto, California. There you go. And then I interviewed the guy, Kinsley, uh, Kinsley, Hensley, I can't remember his name who started it. And so because I was so nice to interview him, he sent me a nice uh, plaque that made me a saint. <laughs> you can refer to me as Saint Alex. <laughs> I was going to ask if it's Saint Alex or Saint Bennett or Saint Bolo for that matter. Saint well, Bolo would be very nice. See this one Saint talk. Bolo of Harlem. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm not going to kiss your feet. Yeah, I can do that. After this year. Oh, you won't? I won't. Oh, okay. Well, I can bless you, however. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah you but touch, somehow this bishop had a million dollars of jewelry 
more or less, can we call it, in his pocket while yeah. he's preaching. Yeah. So, you know. But uh, Kirby J. Hensley, that was his name. Well, how do I remember these names, but I can't remember Marjorie's? I don't understand. Um, um, oh, no. Kirby J. Hensley, who was the head of the Universal Life Church, and for $20, you could get a thing and be, make you a minister in the Universal Life Church. And then you can marry people, I gather. I think Yes, I could, actually. Yeah, that's what our next-door neighbor did when we got married. She went to one of those places, got the $20 certificate. So I'm assuming I'm married, but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> my son's going to marry my daughter, and my daughter, he's uh, ordained or whatever it is from the that church. He's going to marry our daughter. He's ordained from the Univer Universal mm -hmm. Life Church in Modesto, mm -hmm. California. It is mm -hmm. totally legal. Yeah, it, it is. <laughs> I didn't know they were still around. Oh, yeah. I don't know what happened to my certificate. You better wick that thing out, man. You can make some money. There's your there's your money maker. Yeah. So marrying people. And then Marjorie and I can go out and she can get robbed of a million dollars. You know. Who wouldn't want Alex Bennett to marry him? If I knew you were available. So this guy who got robbed of a million dollars in jewelry is a friend of our mayor. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yep. Our, Our mayor great really mayor. stinks. He really stinks. That's a close friend of our current mayor. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Boy. It's like being a close friend of the former president. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so um, that, that, it, where were we? Oh, yes. Yeah, so we were, we got, how did we get into that whole religious thing? <laughs> Oh, I we didn't even, oh, I know what it was. We were talking about St. Jude's. Oh, uh, yeah. Which yeah. then got me away from uh, mm -hmm. us talking about not St. Jude's. Charities. About, oh, no, about going over to Graceland. I think we went to Graceland first. Maybe I'm wrong on that. No, I think we went second. I think we had no, already I been to some But it second doesn't matter. Right. It, all I know is that was that was terrible. That was just terrible. I mean, well, it, we had good barbecue that night, if I remember correctly. Yeah, but but that was terrible, and it was terrible because it's an exercise in incredibly bad furnishing. <laughs> you know, no, he, that that yeah, that <laughs> Graceland. He had that the carpeting called, on the ceiling, if I remember. Yes, correctly. carpeting on the ceiling. And, and a place called the Jungle Room. You remember that? Well, we have a picture of you and me at Graceland. Somewhere, yeah. Mm -hmm. I've got I it downstairs. It was the souvenir shop with all the posters and the shoes and the hats and the T-shirts. Yeah, yeah. And they, the Lisa, the airplane Lisa is there too. It's in, across the street. They, they uh, put it. Anyway. I have a second-hand anecdote about Andy Kaufman and uh, Graceland, if anyone would like to hear it. Sure, go ahead. So Jimmy Hart, the mouth of the South, who is yeah. uh, one of the great wrestling managers in history. WWF. There you go. So when Andy Kaufman and Jerry Lawler were having their feud, which yeah. culminated on Letterman with national attention, but for about eight months, they would tour around the South and they'd go to all the wrestling territories to build up the feud that they had. And, and, and Andy was meticulous in, in, uh, in, in, in doing that. And he and Jimmy Hart would be, uh, they were paired up. They call it being married in the, in the wrestling lingo. So they would literally go from town to town together and they spent a ton of time together. Jimmy and I are, are, are kind of buddies. And so he's told me all these stories, but whenever they were close, um, and he said probably in the eight months, it probably happened 10 to 15 times. Andy would beg him, Jimmy, can we go to Graceland? Can we please go to Graceland? Jimmy, can we please go to Graceland? And they would go to Graceland together. And Andy would just be spellbound by the whole experience every time. And every time he went there, it was like the first time. Huh. Well, good for him. We enjoyed Great. Sun Records better. You know, it was good. Uh, let me see here. Well, Andy was crazy. Let's face it. You know? Yeah. Yeah. He, well, he had upset. I mean, I've told you that story where I walked in the lobby of our offices and he's sitting there playing checkers with himself. <laughs> himself? Yeah. Practicing. Was he winning? 
Yeah, I don't know, Len. I have no idea whether he won. Well, which side won, I think, is the question. <laughs> and and can you cheat? Yeah. You know, and also I think I've told, maybe I've told it on this show, his will was signed in our offices. That's what? Cool. Andy had Morty sign his will. Really? Yeah. It why was in Morty's, Morty? Morty's why office. Your, why you pick Morty? Why did he pick your offices? Because he was friends with Morty. <laughs> but he could have had his lawyers sign it. Don't ask me. Okay. Again, he was crazy. Gee, nice guy. I'm not. I'm not saying. Well, you know, bad I did, about this, here's a sad story for you. I I had a friend, Monty Hoffman, who, by the way, is dead now. Uh, as well he should be. Uh, but he's dead now. And uh, he um, was walking through uh, 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 the Haight-Ashbury and he was up around the, uh, the other cafe, which was the club there that was at the time. And he mm -hmm. spotted um, um, what's his name? Who are we Andy, Kaufman. Andy Kaufman. Andy Kaufman. <laughs> Andy Kaufman uh, it's just my brain going. Uh, Andy Kaufman walking down the street and he walked up to Andy. He said, Andy, and I'm Monty Hoffman, the comedian. I just wanted to say hi. How you doing? He said, I'm dying. <laughs> and Mo Monty said, what? He says, I'm dying. He says, you're kidding. He says, that's what everybody thinks. <laughs> he said, anybody I tell I'm dying, they think it's a joke. Because wow. everything else I did in my life was a joke. Mm -hmm. you know? Never cry. Well, away. when Andy passed away, Morty was at the funeral, and I was like, "Morty, did you see the body <laughs> in the casket?" Yeah, yeah. And he's like, "Yes, I did." Because again, <laughs> but, same thing. You don't believe. Said, he said the terrible thing about this is nobody believes me. Hmm. You know, and, and it was kind of sad. I thought when I heard that story. Particularly because it's a man who was in his mid thirties when he got yeah. the cancer or whatever it was that killed him. I think early thirties, actually. Well, it was a young man, uh, and uh, and you know, and he had done so many of those kind of can we call it stunts that you didn't believe it. Right, mm -hmm. right. And you I literally was like Morty. You saw him in the coffin, and Robert is like. Yes, I did. And it's still like I didn't believe it. That's the first time I've heard that because they keep saying that he's going to come back after 20 years or whatever. And it was a big surprise. You know, yeah. Well, he had this Bob, guy who was his pal, Bob Zamuda. Right. Bob Zamuda. Who, who occasionally would play. Uh, well, he would play the other guy. Um, he'd yeah. play Clifton. Yeah, he'd be Tony, Tony Clifton, Clifton all the time. Tony yeah. Clifton, which was this They'd character. book him in the, Reno. And, yeah. and uh, occasionally, to disprove the fact that he was Tony Clifton, he would bring Tony Clifton on stage and bring Zamuda in wearing the Tony Clifton outfit. Right. Uh, and, and that went on for years. And uh, when they said uh, that uh, Tony Clifton was coming back, a lot of people thought, hey, it's going to be Andy, right? This is a right. deal. And no, it was Bob Zamuda. Uh, and people yeah. didn't want to believe it was Bob Zamuda. I mean, yeah. it's just that Andy had set up such a... He pulled it off. That's a, the yeah, best way to yeah. describe it. The legend yep. of for doing these kinds of stunts that when he finally did die, nobody believed it. Nobody yep. wanted to believe it. You know, and they really, a lot of them went to the funeral to make sure. <laughs> yeah, no, as I'm saying, Morty, did you see him? <laughs> yes, I did. They bury him in New York? I believe it was New York. Maybe it was Los Angeles. I can't remember right now. It's either L.A. or New York. Yeah. You can't remember where, where Morty traveled to. Yeah, but, you know, but it's just, I'll give Andy credit. He pulled it off, if you want to call it that. Yeah. Beth, Dave, Beth David Cemetery, Elmont, New York. Where? Beth David Cemetery, Elmont, New York. So it was here in New York. Which yeah. is Nassau County. Yeah, mm -hmm. it and he probably died here. I would imagine. I imagine he came home to die. 
him. Yeah. But I mean, and and, and a lot of people didn't believe it because he was too young to have. Yeah. And he was also he was a nice man. That you know. I never I, I never met I never met him, but uh, everything I ever heard from people was nice about him. They he loved thirty five. Huh. 35. 35. God. Yeah. Well, he earlier than that. Oh, that's the other thing. People didn't believe it. He he had uh, an aggressive lung cancer and he famously did not smoke and was actually uh, very into healthy lifestyle stuff. And so that's <laughs> another reason why people didn't believe it. But yeah, they think it might have been from all the smoke in those clubs that he worked. Yeah. You know, the secondhand smoke may have killed him. Uh, yeah. You know. But, uh, but even like the wrestling thing, you know, he pulled off that, I don't want to call it a scam, but he pulled that off. Yeah. Big was, time. Was Dave in on all of that? What? Was Dave in on all of that? Because he looked no. terrified when they got into the fight. None of that. None of that. Huh. I think, I'll, I'll say I remember, this. I'm, now I'm trying to remember. I think Morty knew what it was all about. But Dave had no idea. Did Dave know that about about uh, Joaquin Phoenix? No. He did. It, in other words, every it, the, the thing was, did people know there? But they kept oh, Dave whoever the and, and, whoever the segment producer at that time was knew what was going to happen, but didn't tell Dave. Okay. <laughs> because the thing is, I don't know if people remember, but Joaquin Phoenix just went on and was was nuts right he was nuts yeah. yeah and he said he was quitting the business and he was going to be a rap singer or something like that i can't remember and uh uh it was all a put on because it was all put on for a movie he was making um, yeah and he was doing that with uh now i can't remember Casey, the guy's Casey name. affleck Casey, Casey affleck, affleck. Yeah. and the movie was i can't remember what it's called but it, it's, i'm still here I believe. i'm still here yeah. yes and and uh, he just went on, was completely crazy and nuts. And Dave believed it. Now, I think if I were the host of the show, I would want to be kept in the in the uh, in the dark. The loop, so to speak. No, I wouldn't want to be kept in the loop. I would want to be kept in the dark. Mm. So I could react to it like any human being would react to it rather than reacting to it like. Well, it's, it's also better. like what's his name who tried to kick him? Um, Crispin Glover. Crispin Glover. Yeah. 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 But uh, Dave had no idea. Yeah. And he had no idea probably that Drew Barrymore was going to stand up on the desk and take her top off. No. And I can <laughs> tell you, my friend here, Mike, interviewed the segment producer who worked with on that segment. Really? Yeah. I was watching live that night. I remember that show. <laughs> but yeah, Dave was, had no idea. It was yeah. fascinating listening to Daniel Kellison talk about that. Um, and how they explored it beforehand and um, you know because it happened to be Dave's birthday and so yeah Drew it was his had, birthday yeah yeah so Drew had been to this uh, club in New York something blue I forget the name of the club but it was this artistic out there club and they started talking about this and it, it was famous famously on the, the cover of the New York Post that Drew Barrymore went there and got naked in a cage or something and she said it was really liberating and so they were talking about that and uh and Kellison said, well, if you wanted to, you know, keep going along that frame, it is, it is Dave's birthday. And she's like, okay, perfect. Have Paul, uh, I'm butchering the story. It's way better to hear Daniel tell it, but yeah, have Paul have some, some like sleazy jazz type blues type music ready to go in case I decide to do something. And, and, and he basically planted the seeds and she just went with it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But no, it's another thing. Dave had no idea. No idea. And, and that's the way I would want to be if I were Dave. You know, because I would want to be able to have a natural reaction. Because then he gets to react to it. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. Exactly. And, like, and let's Dave, say again, going back to Crispin Glover, if Dave knew in advance the guy was going to try and kick him. Um... Yeah. 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 So it's. Uh... You know, and that was, I remember correctly, I'm going up on this a little. Crispin Glover came on with his eyeball collection or something like that. Mike might know better. <laughs> that was than I weird. Do. Well, there were times when my producer would come to me and say to me, uh, well, so and so's gonna be on the show. And by the way, they're gonna do something very special. And I say, Don't tell me. Yeah. Just don't tell me. Let me yeah. be surprised. Yeah. Okay. And the fact that you warned me ahead of time is enough, but you know, I, I don't wanna know. 
and, and 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 Albert was very good at that. Sometimes he wouldn't tell me about stuff because he knew that it would be better not to tell me about something the person was going to do or say or whatever. Or let it, just let it happen. And just let it happen. Yeah. Yeah. So what are you working on, Mandy? Hold on. <laughs> you uh, you uh, cooking the books? <laughs> actually, it was funny when you were talking about charities. I'm actually working on um, the charity part of my job. We have a charity called Cares for Kids that my uh, boss started back in 2005. Oh, that's very nice. And 100% of it, 100 of the donations go to help children in our communities because yeah. it's real estate agents that are donating with through their commissions. They take wow. part of their donate part of their commission out of their check and i just have to That's very nice i'm glad it isn't I'm car, these I'm google glad. sheets and everything huh i'm glad, I'm glad it isn't cars for kids because <laughs> <laughs> then yeah, i never i never click the button to let you on ever 1-800 cars for kids no. yeah. I'm sick of that commercial yeah, me too. Those, those kids from that commercial must be in their 30s by now, much yeah. long as they've been I running. An, I looked at, I saw it the other day, and I think there are new kids. Mm. <laughs> there are new kids, but it's still the same voices from same, same the old voices. days. Yeah. Mm. But that's also, that's a, um, you know, again, you know me when I get on to the Hasidic. It's yeah. a phony Hasidic. It is. Yeah, yeah they really? say they sell every car for $500. Yeah. And you get a free yeah. vacation voucher. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Where? <laughs> Edward, are all the cars $500? No, they say they sell them for $500, but really they're somewhere like 10000 or something. Well, now they're saying also if you have property, yeah. or you have yeah. this, or you have yeah. that. Little things. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna. Yeah, but it's, it's one of those phony Hasidic yeah scams. Yeah. What were you gonna say? I want to make and, a statement. That's not the charity I'm working on. I'm I know you're not. I know <laughs> you're, you're not. A and, and we've raised over two million dollars. She's raised through her all her real estate market centers over two million dollars. That's you awesome. Know, and it's all gone to kids, underprivileged kids. That's great. great. Bravo. Can you send me a, an email of that? Yes, I will. It's um, like I said, care for kids. K with a K. K A R E. I'm sure if uh, you want to send the me number the, four. If you kids. if you want to send me the information, I can put it up on Gabnet, and you'll probably get like five bucks. Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I mean, donation is usually around twenty five dollars. So, but they have we you know the market centers will put on golf tournaments and. I just have to record everything on Google Sheets just so we can keep track of how much she's raised. Well, just to finish off, I've got a big day tomorrow. Uh, I'm, be I'm I'm equaling Marjorie in the number of doctors I'm seeing in one day. Oh, here we go. Here we go. What are you going to I'm seeing my, uh, my, my what, what do they call them? Uh, my Your primary answer. care physician. And then right after him, I'm getting in the cab and being whisked downtown so my dentist can stick a drill in my mouth. Mm. Mm -hmm. Nice. Fill a small cavity. So it'll take about 10 hours with her. So it's. Uh, yeah. yeah. Sounds fun. Anyway, I, and she's going to look at it. She couldn't see some stuff in my mouth because it was too swollen after being uh, clean. So why are you looking at my mouth after it's been cleaned? All mouths are going to be somewhat swollen. But anyway, uh, they were doing a, they, the, uh, it's, uh, I, I had my teeth cleaned last week, or as I call it, mining for gold. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, it's good having another uh, wonderful, wonderful uh, Monday with you guys. I really, and gals, mm -hmm. like, uh, ha ha heaven knows we have almost half our, our people here. One, two, three, four, our women out of our 10 people. So that's Imagine that. Ah, that's really good. Oh, I like it. They actually have something to say. Well, I, <laughs> yeah, you're right. As opposed to the night show, right? <laughs> anyway, uh, it's great seeing all of you. I want to say goodbye to Marjorie. Well, I'll see you. Bye. I'll see you for dinner. She made pot pies tonight. Mm. It's by the fact that she also bought ravioli and stuff down at uh, Italy. Yeah. Oh, I want to go there. That sounds cool. It's, it's incredible. 
It's incredible. Mike Chisholm, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Peace and love, everybody. Mandy, always a pleasure to have you here. Uh, Rick Sheckman, uh, my old pal, uh, and this is the only one of my shows he'll ever call. Charlie, <laughs> thank you so much. We always enjoy just seeing you and your presence here. Uh, Paula, gosh, we miss you. Come back and see us soon. You know, we mm -hmm. love having you here. You're you're a good. There are good house guests and there are bad house guests. She's a great house guest. The best. Yeah. And she's a savage. I love it. Marjorie. <laughs> 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 Uh, Len LaFrisco, thank you so much. We always uh, are, are glad when you're here. Jeff thank Stein, thank you as well. You. And now here is Edward Bird. Charlene. What? Charlene. Oh, I said Charlene. Didn't oh, you I? Did? Say, yeah, I said goodbye to Charlene. Yeah. And <laughs> finally to Edward Berger, who signs us off in the immortal words of uh, Porky Pig. <laughs> That's all, folks. <laughs> <laughs> that never gets old. <laughs> the only cartoon voice we got here. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate Thanks, it. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye.